Holy Spirit is the instructor, the informer. He is the one who will show you and he coordinates not only you, but in the whole of the body of Christ for the plan and the purposes of God. Are you praying effective prayers? Today on the Believer's Voice of Victory, Pastor Terry Pearsons of Eagle Mountain International Church explains how God's power in us is released through spirit-led prayers. Now, let's join Pastor Terry. Well, hello, it's Tuesday. Time again for the Believer's Voice of Victory. Bless the Lord. I'm Terry Pearsons. Once again, I'm glad to join you and to gather together around the Word of God. You know, one thing that's really wonderful about being a Christian is that you and I are born of the same Spirit, and the Holy Spirit who's in me and with me is in you and with you. And it's not a different Holy Spirit. His presence fills us all that have come to Him. And by that, uh, we're just like being in the same room. We're together. And if you will allow that, just that thought and that idea and believe it, we'll have a great time today in fellowship with the Lord. Let's pray. Oh, Father, we're so thankful today. We are glad today that Jesus is Lord, that God is still on his throne, and that we are his children. And we are born of the Holy Spirit. We're not walking in darkness. We're children of the light. And our future is just like the light of dawn. It grows brighter and brighter and brighter to the fullness of the noonday sun. We thank you for that. And we ask you to help us today to say the right things and to hear the right things. In Jesus' name, amen. This is going to be a great day for you. And if it's the end of the day, by the time you hear this broadcast, well, it's going to be a great night and getting ready for a great day tomorrow. Now, we've talked a lot about being in the Spirit. My goodness, we spent a whole week and yesterday talking about that realm of the Spirit, that it's more real than the natural realm, and that as a believer, you, and as, just as a person, you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body, and as a believer, you then have a right to that spiritual kingdom. Uh, I just want to give you a scripture today that just to show you how exclusive this right is in John chapter 10, it says, the first verse, Jesus said, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, he who does not enter by the door into the sheepfold but climbs up some other way, he is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And the watchman opens the door for this man. The sheep listen to his voice. They heed it. And he calls his own sheep by name and brings them out. And when he's brought his own sheep outside, he walks on before them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice and they will never on any account follow a stranger because they do not know the voice of strangers. That's you and me and Jesus. He's the good shepherd. He opens the door to the spirit realm for us. The watchman, the Holy Spirit makes the way, guides us into that as, as Jesus directs. And his voice is leading us. And as the sheep of his pasture, we know his voice. How do I know his voice? Well, you are designed to know his voice. You're created to know his voice. And if you will go, first of all, to the word of God and then spend time listening for his voice. Because the scripture tells us what we spent all this time about is building a real foundation here from the word of God that that this kingdom of God, this realm of the spirit belongs to you. And if you will believe it, you just choose to believe. You see, you're created to be a believer. So don't resist these wonderful things, this wonderful insight. Don't resist it. Just believe it. Just we, we've given you enough scripture. Uh, it shouldn't be any room for doubt now that this realm of the spirit exists, that it's real. It's more solid and more sure than the natural realm. You are a spiritual being who has a right to the spiritual realm. You were designed and created to operate in the spirit. Jesus has raised us up. God raised us up with Jesus, caused us to be seated with him in that heavenly sphere, Ephesians 2, 6. So here we are. Now, what all is in that spiritual realm? We found out in Ephesians 1, 
covered that several times, that every blessing is in that spiritual realm. Well, what would that spiritual realm be like? I mean, maybe many of you are really for the first time uh, thinking about this and really getting a clue in that that is a real realm. It's not spooky. It's not mystic and mysterious. Uh, it's not ghostly. It's real. It's very solid. Heaven is a real place. It's a solid place. And to those who are in heaven, it is tangible. Well, in the spirit, our spirit to our spirit, it's very tangible. This in the spirit realm of the spirit is tangible to our own spirit. But do you suppose that maybe it could be that there are some other things in that realm of the spirit that are unusual or different or perhaps even contrary to the natural things that we are accustomed to? I think maybe that could be the case, don't you? Well, if we're so developed in the natural things and underdeveloped in spiritual things, then what we do is we resist and push away what we don't know and recognize if we base everything on our human reasoning. And one of the primary things that's in that realm of the spirit comes from the spirit realm given by the Holy Spirit is praying in the spirit. Now let's look for a moment over at 1 Corinthians. We've read, made reference to this verse a number of times and talked about it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, let's see. Maybe let's go. We may read quite a few verses here, so get ready. Um, verse 4. This is Paul talking. I'm reading from the Amplified, so if it's too hard for you to follow in your translation while I read this, well, just listen while I, I read. Okay, 1 Corinthians 4.4. 4. And my language, my message, was not set forth in persuasive words of wisdom, but they were in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men human philosophies, or, or we could say might not rest in the ways of man, not, might not uh, rest in the current day thinking and evaluation. I, I don't know that there's ever been a day and time like there is in this day and hour when everything is so permeated with humanistic thinking, what man has concluded, what man's own device of what's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad. Everybody has their own opinion, and then they, the prevailing mindset and thought is that everyone is entitled to their own opinion. No, you're, you're not, <laughs> because uh, there's only one opinion that's right. There's only one that works. You know, God's opinion, God's ways, God's thinking is not uh, right just because he wanted it to be, but because it's right and because it works. He, he chooses what's right and what's wrong, what's good, what's bad, not based on just his preference, but on what works. Sin is sin because it will kill you. God doesn't like sin, doesn't want you to sin because it will kill you. Not because he doesn't want you to have fun and get to do what you want. Now, just because some humanistic opinion says, yeah, well, this is okay. It's all right to live like that if you want to. Who's to say whether that's right or wrong? Well, just because someone else told you it's right doesn't mean that it's right. Doesn't mean that it won't kill you just because you think it's all right. So we have to go to the scripture. And what Paul said, I didn't come to you in just words of, of humanistic thinking, human eloquence, human, uh, human abilities, great words of philosophy. But I came to you rather in the power of the Spirit. And that's not just the Holy Spirit doing some great big flashy demonstration, but the power was there. What he said was powerful. It changed people's lives. It brought them out of darkness into light, it healed sick bodies, made them well, turned people's lives around, put them on a course of peace, hope, 
prosperity in every realm of their lives. Why? Because he drew those words from the Spirit, therefore they had power. The, the mental human words, they are not powerless, but they do fall short. They, they are only based on the past, on experience, on learned information. But when you draw from the Spirit, the realm of the Spirit, and you draw words from the realm of the Spirit, there will be a demonstration of power. Somehow, some way, somewhere. Now that demonstration of power comes from believing, because he, he makes that statement. He says, so that your faith won't rest in the human philosophy, but your faith will rest in the power of God. So his words came Drawn, they were drawn out of his spirit, out of this inner being where the Holy Spirit dwells, which is our connection, uh, that, that, uh, how we draw from that realm of the spirit, just the same as if we were walking on streets of gold already, just as if we were already in the atmosphere of heaven, as though we were raised to think like heaven. Even though the scripture says uh, in Isaiah that our thoughts, God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than that, our ways. Absolutely. But that's not where the sentence ends. It goes on to say, so my word goes forth out of my mouth. In other words, my words, my thoughts, my ways have been given to you. The Holy Spirit is there to make contact with the spiritual life that's in those words. That's what Paul did. He said, my language wasn't of my thinking, wasn't of human wisdom, wasn't uh, trying to convince you even of a spiritual thing in a human way. He drew his words from the spirit. And because of that, there was power. He said, so your faith could rest in a power. There's power when, when life is lived from that spiritual realm when, realm, when you draw your life from that realm of the Spirit, when your prayers are drawn from the realm of the Spirit, when they come out of your heart, the kingdom of God is in you. You know, John the Baptist preached the kingdom of God is near. It's at hand. Jesus said the kingdom of God is in you. See, he came to bring the kingdom of God in it. And then he told his disciples, he said, the Holy Spirit is with you and he shall be in you. And when was he in them? When they were born again, they were born of the Spirit. And then on the day of Pentecost, they were filled with his ministry, filled with, with him and his presence. Not only born of the Spirit, but filled with him and had the uh, capacity and the open door. You see, when you're born again, you're given a key to the kingdom. You are given a key that unlocks the door and you have the right to step into the kingdom, step into the realm of the spirit. But the Holy Spirit and his ministry, he's the guy with the flashlight. We said that last week. He leads you and guides you in how to operate, how to function. Did you ever wonder how a nuclear, how do people know about nuclear bombs? How did they, how did they come to that? I, I mean, you could even explain it to me and I couldn't go make one. Even if I understood it, I couldn't go make one. But now there are people who over a great period of time have studied, they have practiced, they have experienced, they have worked at until they know the process. They understand the workings, the, the physics, the physical dynamics of of substance, of atoms and electrons, neutrons, all those wonderful science things. They understand it and can operate it. They, they know how to extract this and mix it with that and balance it in this way and put it in a certain way to such a point that as they direct it, then there is a, a predetermined result. Well, there are predetermined results that can be achieved in the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who teaches us, guides us, leads us, so that all the spiritual things that are given to us, all these heavenly blessings, the armor, 
of the Spirit, you know, the breastplate of righteousness, helmet of salvation, loins girt about with the truth, um, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, and the sword of the Spirit, the sword the Spirit wields, all those things. He knows about those things. He, he knows when you should lift your shield and when you should wield your sword. He, he knows when it's the helmet of your salvation that's necessary for a predetermined result. And so we lean on him and the wisdom and the knowledge of the spirit to function, to operate, to, to, to create when necessary, to dominate when necessary, to, to draw power from that realm of the spirit so that natural things come in line with the will and the purpose of God. Now, this isn't designed just so you can have your way. This is not designed to give you an opportunity, the Bible says, uh, to um, gratify and satisfy the flesh. Not at all. In fact, the, the door to the Spirit closes on that. It closes on pride. It closes on selfishness. It closes on hatred. It just shuts to it. You, you can't function there. Jesus said that that's a thief and a robber. Faith works by love. But it is open to the Holy Spirit and those who lead and rest their confidence on Him and on the Word of God. This, this is the, the chemistry manual. This is the chemistry of the, of the realm of the Spirit is all laid out in this book. And the Holy Spirit is the instructor the informer, he is the one who will show you and he coordinates not only you, but in the whole of the body of Christ for the plan and the purposes of God. And his plan, of course, is that all men should come into the knowledge of Jesus, not just to be acquainted with him and meet him. That's the first step, but to know him in the power, that nuclear power, if you will, of the resurrection. Now let's keep reading along here just a moment. He says, uh, so your faith won't rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet when we are among the full grown, spiritually mature Christians, you know, we need to grow up. There's no reason to just stay around being a baby. And this is how you do it. You believe things like this and you reach for it. You reach, you lean, you learn to lean more entirely on Him and His presence. You learn to lean more on the Word of God. You learn to trust Him further and higher and stronger. You grow in those things. We are among the full spiritually mature Christians. We impart a higher wisdom. Higher than what? Not only just higher than what you can give baby Christians, but higher than that mental human reasoning and idea. Okay. It was pre, it says the knowledge of the divine plan previously hidden. They didn't know these things before the revelation that came through the apostle Paul. It is indeed not a wisdom of this age or this world, nor of the leaders and rulers of this age. Now, you just might as well get used to this thought. You cannot be guided spiritually by people who don't walk with God, by people who uh, you cannot let them define right and wrong. You cannot let them define your future, give you direction. Maybe they have information. Well, fine, you can hear that information. But they're, what they say to you, not what textbooks say, in ungodly education, not what political leaders say who are not leaning to the Holy Spirit, but lean to the present day wisdom, the wisdom of the present age, ideas of right and wrong, good or bad, what you should do or shouldn't do, not the stockbroker, not the teacher, not sometimes not even the preacher, when it's human wisdom and reasoning. You can't lean to that. It says, because those thoughts, those ideas, the prevailing attitude that's in our television, our movies, our society, and our culture, he says, that is being brought to nothing, and it is doomed to pass away. Now, I don't want to hook my cart to whatever is going to be doomed and pass away. 
I'm going to hook my buggy up to the, the kingdom of God, the realm of the spirit, because it is a sure thing. And it's always leading higher and higher and higher, better, better, better. Okay. Rather, we're setting forth the wisdom of God, which was once hidden from human understanding. And it is now revealed to us by God, that wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages for our glorification to lift us into his presence. Now, his presence is where the riches are. His presence is where the riches of life exist. Every kind of rich. Do you understand the, the wealth of, of, of um, inner satisfaction, the wealth of joy, the wealth of peace, the wealth of wholeness, the wealth of, of uh, stability, the wealth of purpose. There is no purpose like the purpose and plan that God has for your life. If you are dissatisfied in your life, Hook up with this. Hook up with, believe it. Just, just go ahead and believe that God has for you. Believe that this place of the Spirit belongs to you and that there is a wisdom of God that's available to you. Okay, don't have much longer. Let's keep talking. He says uh, it's to lift us into the glory of His presence. None of the rulers of this age would... Um, world recognized or understood this for if they had they would never have crucified the Lord of glory but on the contrary the scripture says what eyes not seen ear has not heard nor entered into the heart of man all that God has prepared for those who love him who hold him in affectionate reverence and uh, obey him gratefully recognizing the benefits he has bestowed I can't see it ear can't hear it no part of the natural man can on purpose reach into that spiritual realm. Now, there are things that God does that blesses our eyes and blesses our ears because somebody believed. There are people that get healed that don't have a clue how that happened. God, I mean, God is so good in his grace that his influence and his goodness is still in the earth. And there are ways people partake of that. But... You, you can't be natural and carnal and receive on purpose out of that spiritual realm. You can't walk with God on purpose and be natural and carnal. It, it, you can't do it. And you sure can't develop and you can't grow into a higher wisdom. But how is it, he says, verse 10, yet to us who these who have uh, have faith and resting in the power of God. God has unveiled and revealed them by his spirit for the spirit examines and searches the very bottomless and profound things of God. The Holy Spirit is sent with the purpose of ministering the realm and the glory of God to you. Bless the Lord. Well, now don't go away. We've got some great things to share with you. And then I'll be back in just a few moments. We'll pray together, believe God together, and get ready for tomorrow. Praying in the Spirit in a brand new time. Deep in your spirit, you know that God has a plan for you. It's a plan for you to live healed and whole and debt-free. But how do you access that plan? A Deeper Understanding of Praying in the Spirit, a six-tape audio teaching series by Pastor Terry Pearsons, will answer your questions. From praying as a child at the side of her grandmother, Vanetta Copeland. She knew God. She didn't just know about God. She knew God. To establishing the life-changing prayer ministry at Eagle Mountain International Church, Pastor Terry has received revelation into the mysteries of praying in the Spirit, and she shares them with you in this series. Praying in the Spirit in a brand new time. Heartless confessions are empty confessions. Heartless prayers are empty prayers. If they don't come from the heart, they are not faith prayers because faith is not in your head. Faith is in your heart. A Deeper Understanding of Praying in the Spirit by Terry Pearsons is available for only $24 plus shipping and handling. To order, go to KCN.org. 
or call 1-800-575-4455 and ask for offer 60109. You can use your charge card or personal check to order your products online or when you call our toll-free number. If you prefer to write, the address is Kenneth Copeland, Fort Worth, Texas, 76192. Well, I know that the presence of the Holy Spirit is with you right where you are. And just as quick as a decision, do what we read in that scripture and throw your faith over on the power of the Holy Spirit. Forget what your mind is telling you. Forget the arguing or even the sense of struggle about it and just throw yourself over on the mercies of God, on His ability to get His power into your life. Remember, you are made to walk in the Spirit, designed to walk in the Spirit. You are a creature that has been born right out of the very Spirit of God Himself. So throw open your heart to Him and say, Oh, Holy Spirit, lead me. Oh, Holy Spirit, fill me to overflowing. And then just begin to lift your heart up to God and just say to Him whatever comes up in your heart, not out of your head, out of your heart. He's there to help you find that place in the Spirit. It's not hidden uh, from you. It's, it's in there. It's for you. It's part of you. The kingdom of God is in you right now. Just lay hold of it. Oh, Jesus. And begin to just speak. And if you're not careful now, praying in tongues will come right out. Whatever comes out, yield to it. Don't question it. And don't let it disturb you. Just throw your heart over into it. Now, if you want to know more about praying in the Spirit, in the Spirit, you can order these tapes that we've been telling you about, a deeper understanding of praying in the Spirit. And you'll learn some things about how this really relates to your everyday life, and it'll help you develop in walking in that realm of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. And of course, the information there is on your screen. Uh, and if, uh, if you can, I, I think that you should order these because they'll be a great help in a ministry to you. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, if you've missed any of the broadcasts this week or last week or any time, you can always go to our webcast at kcm.org, and you can take advantage of that 24 hours a day. You know, you can even watch the church broadcast where my husband, George, and I pastor. Uh, we're uh, live on, you can go to kcm.org or emic.org and just join us in our, our services We'd just be glad to have you there. Praise the Lord. Well, I'd want you to join me again tomorrow. Don't forget, call a friend and remember, Jesus is Lord. Thanks for being a part of today's Believer's Voice of Victory. For a copy of this week's teaching on audio or video cassette, visit us at kcm.org and order online. Or call us toll-free, 1-800-575-4455. Tomorrow on the Believer's Voice of Victory. If you are leaning to your own understanding, then you are not going to know what God thinks, what He wants, what His plans are for you or anyone else. So we can't lean to human reasoning. We must go to the Scripture, study what it says, and let the Holy Spirit reveal to us God's will and His ways.